Hi, I'm Annette Faye, a junior research fellow at Queen's College and in the Department of Zoology at the University of Oxford. I'm interested in seabird ecology. I'm Tash Gillis, I'm a DPhil student in zoology at Merton College, Oxford, and I'm interested in seabird behaviour, particularly during the breeding season. We're here to tell you a bit about our research on seabirds that takes place on Scomer Island in Pembrokeshire, Wales, and to answer the big question, should we put our ocean first? We're both seabirds biologists. Seabirds are fascinating birds, which can live for a very long time, spend most of their lives at sea, where they mostly feed on small fish. Unfortunately, seabirds are also one of the most endangered group of birds on Earth, and each of us work on a different seabird species. As elusive seafarers and nocturnal visitors to land, the Manx Shearwater, a small black and white seabird which is related to the albatross, is one of our least well-known birds. Yet Skomer Island in southwest Wales is home to the world's largest population of this species. With estimates of around 350,000 pairs nesting on the island, once shearwaters start to hatch their chicks, there can be up to one million birds on the island on a given night. Our group, Oxnav, has been putting GPS units on these birds for the last 10 years. These are tiny devices which use the same technology as a maps app on your phone to track shearwaters as they move around UK waters during the breeding season. Through this, we can identify which parts of the ocean are most important to these birds as they search for food to feed themselves and their chicks. My study species are Atlantic puffins, one of the most charismatic birds in the UK with their unmistakable colourful bill. Puffins breed all over the North Atlantic, including on UK offshore islands. In Wales, the largest colony is on Skomo Island with around 12,000 breeding pairs. Although they're doing really well there, Elsewhere, puffins have been declining. In some places, numbers have declined by 80% in 50 years, and they're now endangered in Europe. Despite being so charismatic, puffins are also enigmatic birds. In fact, when I started studying them 10 years ago, little was known about their migration. After breeding, they disappeared at sea for eight months, and no one knew where. So for the last 10 years, I've been using tiny loggers called geolocators weighing just one gram to track their migration. I want to find out where they migrate, but also why some of their populations have been declining so much. So what did we find out? Mine shear waters are not currently endangered, but with more than 50% of the population residing on a single island, any threats to Skilmer Island could have consequences for the entire global population. Our GPS tracking has revealed that shearwaters from four populations across the UK all forage in a restricted area of the Irish Sea. This means that any human-mediated threats, such as pollution or overfishing, could have consequences for shearwaters across their entire UK range. But it's not just about the shearwaters. Many marine species across the UK make use of this area to hunt. And so by examining Manx shearwater behaviour, we can make inferences about the health of the ocean more generally and how this might affect other animals too. Tracking them with geolocators revealed that puffins on Skoma have an incredibly diverse and highly unusual pattern of migration. Birds which could nest in neighbouring burrows could migrate thousands of kilometres apart, with some birds visiting areas all across the North Atlantic, from the Labrador Sea near Canada to the Mediterranean Sea. Furthermore, by collaborating with researchers in other countries where puffins breed, such as Iceland, Norway and Canada, we were able to show that puffins, which have to migrate further and to have a more difficult winter, do less well at rearing a chick the next spring. And this could be because the parents return to their breeding colony already tired from a difficult winter and don't have enough energy to invest in rearing their offspring. And that's important because it shows that if we want to understand why specific populations of animals are declining, we need to look at what these animals are doing the entire year and not just during breeding, particularly if they're migratory. So let's go back to the big question. Should we put our oceans first? The world's oceans play a key biological role on Earth. They cover more than two thirds of the planet's surface and are home to an estimated 2.2 million species. Many of the planet's most diverse and unique ecosystems are found in or directly supported by the oceans, such as coral reefs and island habitats. And many of the animals found within these habitats are not seen anywhere else in the world. And of course, our sea birds would not exist if it weren't for the oceans. Yet despite this, we actually know very little about our ocean habitats. 
More than 95% of the ocean remains unexplored, and scientists estimate that more than 90% of species remain to be discovered. We can't hope to protect the species and ecosystems that live in our oceans if we don't know anything about them. But our ocean is also essential to our survival. It produces over half the oxygen we breathe and stores huge amounts of carbon dioxide, hereby helping buffer the effects of global warming. For millions and millions of people, the ocean also provides a livelihood and a key source of protein through fish and seafood. So the answer is yes, we should absolutely put our ocean first. And we should do it now because it is facing more threats than ever. For example, from a seabird perspective, systematic overfishing reduces the availability of fish that the birds need to survive and feed their young, while marine pollution leads to birds filling their stomachs with plastic, being entangled in ghost fishing nets, and being caught in oil pollution. So we do need to protect our ocean and the marine species which live in it. However, the answer is not that simple. Our terrestrial and freshwater ecosystems are also incredibly important. While healthy oceans ensure that our puffins and shearwaters are able to find enough food to feed themselves and their offspring, they're wholly dependent on terrestrial ecosystems, islands, in order to successfully raise their chicks. On islands where predators such as rats have been introduced by humans, populations have plummeted and led to local extinctions. Therefore, healthy island habitats like Skomer are hugely important to these seabirds and many others besides. So really, we should put our planet first. <laughs>